The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And we've got uh, kind of an interesting market. Uh, we're up 20 points on the SP Cash. Uh, when we look at the associated volume so far, 4.5 billion shares, so fairly good, but not the kind of 10 billion to 12 billion shares that we're looking for for a blowout of the previous highs. So kind of a lighter volume test. Uh, when we look back at some of the other ones, like the dollar index, we're down 45 cents at 96.13. We had uh, EIA numbers out for natural gas earlier today. And um, I'm not doing much. It's down nine cents at uh, $2.18.5. Uh, crude up, of course, uh, on uh, tensions in the Mideast. As if that's anything new, uh, we are going to apparently have a meeting of uh, several of the leadership of Capitol Hill uh, and a briefing at three. So look for some uh, additional volatility before the end of the day if any of that news leaks one way or the other. Uh, but uh, markets kind of absorbed it fairly well. Doesn't really look at what's going on here. Uh, too harshly, uh, but again, um, it is going to be exceedingly rare that the United States involves itself uh, in Mideast conflicts uh, on anything other than the new moon. Um, our chief strategy relies on stealth aircraft, and you can see them when the moon's out, so you either need horrible uh, inclement weather uh, where no one can see anything, or you need a moonless night. And generally, um, it's all about that moonless night. So I'm not really thinking that there's anything going to happen anytime real soon. Um, U.S. is more than willing to wait, even if uh, uh, there's a lot of saber rattling on the other side, um, to when the conditions actually favor action. I don't know that we've got action coming. I'm just saying that if we get it, my guess is it won't be uh, before the new moon, which is right around the 1st of Jan uh, June, or yeah, Jan 1st of uh, July, so or right in that area. So don't see a lot happening right then. Anyway, uh, S&P cash at 29.46.63. Options all suggest much lower tomorrow. I did buy a uh, bearish uh, uh, option uh, today, and it, it's up fairly you know, substantially uh, by about 50, well, by about 100 percent. I expect that there could be a great deal more there and are willing to sit on my hands. The other big news of the day is that uh, Slack came out uh, as a uh, DPO, not an IPO. We'll talk about that in a minute and how it's doing right now, 4146 after a par value of 26. We have our favorite, uh, um, what can you came? Just put, insert something derogatory for Mr. Kramer, who was fanning the flames of this yesterday. Uh, but uh, you never know. Anyway, uh, we'll get and start looking at a handful of other things. Of course, uh, Oracle came out, and surprisingly enough, I thought if there was going to be one that failed, it was going to be it, that they did well, uh, even surprised me. Uh, but uh, not much happening on that. Um, and again, not much in the way of earnings over the next couple of days. Tomorrow morning, CarMax will give us a little read on what's going on uh, in the uh, car business. Uh, when we get into next week, uh, Tuesday morning, we've got Lennar. And uh, after the bell, we've got Micron on Tuesday, FedEx. Yeah, that's kind of it. Kind of thin and variable uh, as we go into next week. 
uh, in the morning on Wednesday. And I don't really see anything that can actually move the market that morning. Let's see. And even that afternoon, just not much happening. Let's see what we get into Thursday next week. Uh, Walgreens Boots Alliance in the morning on Thursday. Again, Conagra Brown, uh, Brands, so not much happening there. Uh, Nike, which is probably, it's a little bit of volatility after the bell on next Thursday, a week from today. And see if there's anything into Friday. Uh, next Friday before the bell, Constellation Brands and Jinko Solar. So, again, I don't think you got about one in there that could actually move the market next week. So, again, uh, probably a headline-driven market for most of the week. I don't see a great deal other than that happening. And, of course, uh, if you're looking for a pattern uh, in options expiration, it is if Wednesdays if Wednesdays uh, down and Thursdays up. Generally, Friday you get a little bit of a pullback. Um, options actually, they, if they could run the table with some negative news and just get it down to about uh, twenty nine twenty on the S and P cash, that'd be worth about two hundred fifty million uh, million dollars. Uh, if they could get it down to about uh, twenty nine hundred. Um, about almost uh, about 375 million dollars. That's just in the spies. So there's a lot of cash running on this. And if the market would pull back, even the 20 points we're up today, which wouldn't change a great deal of anything, I think, in this market, um, would be rather significant uh, for options. So I'm kind of interested to see how they actually play out today. Again, uh, not the kind of volume we need if we turn lower. Uh, you could get uh, several signals. Those may be fake, uh, but it would still be interesting nonetheless. Uh, to, 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 let's see what else we have out here. Well, that's about it. We'll do a little history, and then we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1975, Jaws, a film directed by Steven Spielberg that made countless viewers afraid to go back into the water in the summer, opens in theaters. The story of the great white shark that terrorizes a New England resort town became an instant blockbuster and the highest grossing film in movie history until it was bested by 1977's Star Wars. Jaws was nominated for an Academy Award Best Picture and Category, took home three Oscars for Best Film Editing, Best Original Score, and Best Sound. Um, if you ever take a script writing course, uh, for Hollywood, and I did because I was designing a video editor, so I probably should, I'm, I wouldn't be great at it, but I needed to know how to do it. Um, one of the first things you learn about writing scripts and stories is there's only four original stories. And one of them, of course, is about going after the big white whale. And uh, when you really look at it, Jaws was nothing more than a retelling of a story that had been around already for 120 years, and that being going after the Great White Whale. We'll be back after a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And why uh, there's probably a good chance we go another five points higher tomorrow. Um, and probably a high probability of that, maybe 60, 70 percent. There's a chance that we're down 40 points on the S&P cash. And uh, man, it's about about 30 percent. So the question is, is the risk reward really good for being short for the next day or so? And the answer is yes, in my opinion. I don't think that there's a lot that uh, is going to come out that's going to help anything. Uh, probably had too many shorts coming in in the morning. And we're seeing a little of those people be uh, um, being squeezed at the end of the day, but uh, I don't. There's just not enough juice here. Um, and the question is, after the open tomorrow, are a lot of people going to want to uh, be uh, long come the weekend in case anything happens? I think we'll know a lot more after three o'clock when we have the uh, uh, the uh, Congress people come out and maybe make some statements about what they learned in the uh, briefing on Iran. But my guess is that right now, everybody's just ignoring everything. But uh, it only takes one little spark when you're up on light volume to change everything. And uh, you know what? With options expiring tomorrow, uh, the risk reward can be absolutely astronomical. Um, I'm planning on the chance of losing 50 cents to make $3. So we'll see how that does. Uh, right now, the last tick I see uh, says what I bought for 50 cents is worth a buck oh five. And uh, we'll see how that goes in. But I'm pretty much uh, going to hold those through uh, at least uh, noon or a little after, unless I'm proved drastically wrong. But my guess is that. Uh, if we're up today, a lot of people are going to start thinking about taking some cash off the table tomorrow morning, and we'll look at that. Uh, Armageddon style. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, let's go ahead and start looking at some charts. Again, we got a lot of stocks uh, up on light volume, not all of them, but there is some low-hanging fruit if we do turn down. Um, we looked at some of those yesterday. We'll look at a few more of them. Uh, today, uh, where are we at here? 
Um, first of all, we want to look at uh, Oracle and see how it's doing now. Um, they came out after the bell, and like I said, if there was one company that was going to surprise uh, to the downside, I thought it would be this one. It certainly wasn't uh, the one, which probably tells you that uh, there is some juice left in it. And there were a lot of people short going into this. I'm not a big fan of trying to uh, pick what people will say in earnings. Much rather play it the day after, a couple of days after. Uh, but you're back up against the previous high of April 24th, $55.53, 10 million shares, uh, and through it with 33 million shares of 34. So you got a sign of strength in Oracle, and it is breaking out. For all the uh, hand wringing about the end of uh, the big tech cycle, certainly looks very interesting. Uh, as we said, a lot of these stocks are right up against resistance. Amberilla is one of the ones we brought up yesterday. You got yet another little doji. This is the second one on no volume. This takes you back to the gap down on May 22nd. You had 3.8 million shares yesterday, 270,000 shares today. 216,000 shares. Uh, could they just pin this at 45 bucks for options expiration tomorrow? And it's certainly possible. Um, after the open, if this thing's at 45 bucks with no juice, might be a, uh, a, a one to take a look at for puts into the end of the day. In fact, uh, playing white lightning, as Tom O'Brien calls it, uh, looks very interesting to me. Amgen uh, did pop a little higher, not much volume today. I think we looked at that the other day, too. Uh, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Let's see if there's an, anything here. i got a lot of announcements. Oh, we were going to talk about uh, uh, Slack. And uh, Slack is something I use uh, every day. I used to have my own channel on Slack. Uh, it uh, didn't IPO today. It did something else. And uh, where's that at? Did I get it? Did I close it? There it is. Um, to, 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 there we go. Uh, okay. It did a direct public offering, a DPO, not an IPO, uh, also known as direct listing as a way for companies to become publicly traded without blank uh, bank backed initial public offering support. Direct listings are an alternative to initial public offerings in which the company does not work with an investment bank to underwrite the issuing of stock. By foregoing the safety net of an underwriter, uh, it provides a company with a quicker, less expensive way to raise capital. The opening stock price will be completely subject to the market demand and potential market swings. Now, we had Spotify actually try this a few months ago, but the way they did it, they only came out with a few, I think 10% of the float actually uh, tradable. Uh, one of the things that uh, you should know about these is there is no lockup period. There also are a bunch of sore losers on Wall Street that probably thought that they were going to be able to get, uh, they were going to be able to wet their beak uh, to the tune of about $2 billion, which would normally be their cut after a company of $16 billion, which was the uh, price or the value of the company if it went out at 26 bucks. It's been trading around 41 bucks today. Uh, what I did say was, uh, also was, uh, you got to really be careful when you get somebody like Kramer fanning the flames for uh, unsophisticated investors, or as I call them, rubes, uh, that listen to uh, that nitwit. Um, is he always wrong? No. Is he mostly wrong? Yes. Uh, there's a reason why he's on TV uh, after he blew up his hedge fund twice. Uh, I don't know if he's gotten any better. I just... The problem is when you get one person like that, that uh, too many people can easily follow as a cult leader, uh, it becomes problematic. I've seen him uh, drive stocks to unbearable, hotly high prices, only to lose 90% of their value. Uh, that's not new in the stock market. Uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, he's got a megaphone, and he can cause a lot of people 
that are fairly unsophisticated traders to, to make uh, movements that are probably um, unwise. And uh, I tell everybody about uh, if you've ever been to Las Vegas and you sit down at a table, everybody always assumes you at least have a basic working knowledge of playing poker. Uh, but if you just do stupid stuff, you can wipe a lot of people out on the way for you going and losing all your cash. Those people are known as donkeys. And uh, what uh, Mr. Kramer can do is raise an entire army of donkeys to do stupid stuff. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about Slack, why I love it, and why the product may still not be able to make it, even though it's a good product. We'll be back in a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back uh, 2947 on the S&P cash. Anyway, we're talking about uh, Slack coming out. Um, actually, a very good program. Um, there are a lot of messengers out there, not many that run on literally every kind of platform from uh, iOS to Mac uh, to Linux to Microsoft to Android. Um, they've got an app for every one and every flavor. Uh, also has a lot of features I actually love. 
back to, to, to let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to just bring it up here. Here's a uh, little conversation where I'm talking to a handful of people about machine learning, and um, somebody's asking my opinion on uh, what they should do and how they should learn to write software for uh, the stock market. Um, anyway, fairly interesting product in the fact that it does exactly what you need to do if you're developing software uh, in any kind of collaborative effort. Um, what is not sure yet on Slack is if they can take a lot of these rooms, uh, which are free, and turn them into paying customers. Uh, if you own a business, you probably want to pay. Uh, if you have some kind of uh, ad hoc room here that's about machine learning, eh, most of those are free. And here's the rub. Microsoft has a product called Microsoft Teams. It links not only uh, up like Slack, but they're adding hooks into it for uh, actually doing a lot of the repetitive efforts that you would have in GitHub. So Microsoft continues to kind of put this together. That they decided not to have uh, lockups, that they bypassed a lot of that stuff, makes me wonder if Microsoft Teams uh, under the cover, since I don't use it, is really going, and the combination of it with both LinkedIn and GitHub is the kind of killer product that basically kills off even a good version uh, of a messenger like Slack. Uh, they're basically their call to action is that they're going to get rid of email in the corporate environment. Uh, certainly you can do that with Slack today and they just charge you for it. Uh, but it, since it's a invitation only kind of product, you don't get a lot of spam. It's pretty easy to take care of. Uh, as I've told a couple people uh, early on uh, when Microsoft was developing uh, Microsoft uh, Learning.net, a package for doing a lot of machine learning, I'd opened up uh, my own Slack room as they were doing it. Eventually, they uh, decided that they didn't want uh, anybody to do any, with anything with it that weren't, wasn't on a, a product called Glitter, which is kind of like this. Uh, but really designed and linked into GitHub uh, on almost a one-for-one -one basis. My guess is that eventually Microsoft Teams, uh, Glitter, and or Gitter, Glitter, and uh, most of the features in Slack will all go into Microsoft Teams for collaborative uh, development of software. Um, at the price that they're at today, they're basically putting in a lot of uh, value uh, that Slack will be able to get out of the development uh, part of the market and actually get into the Fortune 500 standard uh, line of business uh, everyday kind of thing and make it more of a ubiquitous product instead of one that all so that it has uh, lots of users, uh, gets out of uh, just the development phase, but if you're developing a product uh, like a shareware or not a shareware, like a, a open source project, it is very, very good uh, for uh, doing a lot of not only technical support, but other things. Anyway, uh, I use it a lot. I love it. Uh, we use it uh, at TFNN uh, for communications with the um, producer in the studio, so I use it every day for that too. But uh, just a, a good product, but even good products sometimes can't make money. They have not proved that they can make money yet. Um, what is, uh, do, 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 what is, what features does it have? Um, well, in fact, I probably need to now pop it back up here. One of the, uh, over here on the right-hand side, I sent a link. Uh, to a video on YouTube, and you'll see that it brought up uh, the actual preview, and you can see it inside of it. Um, more than just being a standard messenger, they have a lot of, they make uh, an API available for people to make specific plugins 
uh, for all kinds of things. Like if you want to uh, have a video conference, there's a plugin for that. Uh, you want to have uh, charts and other things. Um, there, uh, there are probably a thousand different plugins available for it. But think of uh, just like being able to pick up uh, any kind of uh, application that needs to be added to a room of many people and uh, a lot of that um, from, you know, you can uh, basically buy uh, all kinds of things that make sure that bad words don't go in. Um, like I said, video uh, uh, editing, one to many, many to one. Uh, so there's uh, basically, if, if someone's thought of it, it's already available for it. So it is kind of a Lego thing where you just keep plugging the, yeah, the, most of the plugins are stuff you pay for. Again, that's where uh, it's going to be interesting is how well they can get people to move from free, which is the room I'm showing right now, uh, which has what, about 3,600 people in it, uh, to uh, one where people actually pay on an ongoing basis, because that's really their model, is to go after corporate America and have a way for them to have a, a interactive uh, system for that. But uh, it very, let's say that you were building an airplane and you had all the different teams from avionics to engines uh, to uh, aluminum for the skin of the plane to the tires and landing gears. Uh, it makes it very easy to chop all those things up, put those people in a group, uh, and be able to track over time all the um, the communications, uh, public communications between them. It also offers a email-like system without all the problems of email, i.e. spam. So uh, it just a great communication product for people inside the tent, not everybody, including bozos, uh, spamming you. And I think that's... Probably it. Hopefully, I explained it as well uh, as necessary. Uh, just something I've used very well. Um, a lot of the uh, free messengers uh, have gone away, uh, like Yahoo Messenger and some of the other ones, and that's always been something. And um, I just, their app for Windows is very good. And like I said, uh, download the free app on your uh, Android phone, and you can see how it works too, or on a uh, iOS for. Um, smartphones and I mean they, they've got everything covered and that's one of the rare things too is that literally anywhere you go uh, Linux included you can use their chat system we'll be back after this if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And had a question here. The product that Microsoft has is a thing called Microsoft Teams, which is very much like it, much more uh, directly focused toward programmers. Uh, but uh, I think they're starting to open that up. And once you get uh, to Teams and GitHub and their own uh, development software and the other uh, accoutrement that comes along with the uh, with the the suite of products Microsoft already has, the question is whether or not they can ever make any kind of money. Um, and I, I think that's what everybody's thinking. Can they expand out of the direct uh, software development model that really it's worked on? Um, another question is where did it come from? Uh, there was a guy named Jim Butterfield. Uh, around 2005 or six, uh, that didn't like um, the way that instant messengers worked for developing a software game. The software game ended up uh, going into the uh, ash heap of history, the round bin, uh, but uh, everybody really loved the product that they developed, which became Slack. And uh, well, for a guy that actually was born in a log cabin, with no power, no electric, no anything else, um, no running water, an outhouse, uh, to be worth a, probably a billion and a half dollars today is kind of quite the story, too. Uh, what else do we have? Let's take a quick look at Microsoft. Um, slowly creeping back up uh, around the highs, 29.49 is the last uh, hit up here at the highs. Uh, to two. So what do we have? Microsoft, you did hit highs. You haven't, uh, of course, had a sign of strength above 131. And that is the real problem out here. You've got a market that's rather brittle. It doesn't mean that it'll turn down today or tomorrow. I'm just saying that the risk reward is more than likely that you do have some kind of movement uh, to the lower tomorrow from what options are saying. And you could have a big surprise. And of course, this is what you really dislike uh, if you're long, and that is light volume pushes to new highs, no signs of strength, and uh, a lot of things that could fairly quickly go wrong. What I dislike about Microsoft is not just the volume, not just uh, the uh, lack of a sign of strength, uh, but the overall uh, weakness from that June 3rd low up into the high today, there just isn't much juice. Generally means that you're going to come back into the trading range, which means uh, the next target I'd want to look at is below 131.37. Um, the downside is this is the company that can do no wrong. Uh, they've made every, uh, I'm going to say 95% of all the uh, decisions that they've made since the new CEO have been right. 
And there's a lot of discussion about whether or not they're his decisions or they're uh, Bill Gates, or he's just channeling Bill Gates. But uh, I think the guy, been around for a long time, really a disciple of Bill Gates and not a uh, bomber, uh, wasn't bomber's real choice. And in fact, um, uh, Bill Gates uh, apparently put his thumb on the scale when it came to getting a new CEO and running bomber off. Uh, and it looks to be pretty good. I thought there was one guy that was going to be better than him. Um, and amazingly enough, he went into, um, he was kind of the head of all the Word and Excel and all that in the software development part of the business. I thought he'd probably be the best guy. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm a little bit wrong about that. And he's, of course, a lot richer because he joined a big uh, venture capital firm and had just a long string in the last three or four years of huge winners. So he's probably still happy, doesn't have to run a big company, doesn't have a lot of people to report to, and probably actually made more money than the current CEO of Microsoft. Microsoft CEO, probably long-term going to make a lot more money. But in the short run, the last three, four years, uh, the guy that left for the vulture capital firms actually so far has made more money and had a whole lot less work. So that could be it. Uh, what do we got? A couple of minutes here left. I wanted to look at a handful of others and see what we have for Amazon today and see whether or not they can push up. Um, certainly, uh, you've got a little bit of juice as we went higher uh, than the May 16th high. That had 4.7 million shares. You did 2.3 million shares. Again, this is a brittle market. And... Um, you know, if I was going to do anything, I would be buying puts for tomorrow. They're cheap uh, or bearish. Let me put it bearish positions for tomorrow. Doesn't mean that I will be right. But uh, if you risk a quarter, you know, for an option or a dime, uh, maybe you get a buck or two back. So uh, the bang for the buck probably hasn't been this good. Now, of course, Monday and Tuesday, we go into options rollover. And then Wednesday, of course, that takes us up to the 26th already. Uh, you actually get into fun buying in a couple of days after that. But the real uh, story is going to be that 29th meeting between uh, President Trump and President Xi, uh, where they talk all matters of things. And uh, from what I've read, there's a lot of issues with China's banking system uh, that uh, Zai might be more than willing to get this uh, done sooner rather than later uh, before any of the cracks in the dike start uh, showing up. And eh, there's never uh, the little Dutch boy that has his finger in it when you need it. So you never know. Uh, to, to let's take a look at another one uh, in FLX. Uh, I had a question about that. I mean, again, these things... Uh, Lower highs, higher lows. Uh, you want these things to break out. Generally, the first movement will be to the wrong side. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some kind of uh, blowout, maybe for the news on Iran or something like that, um, in a lot of these stocks that make them kind of go down and offer yet another opportunity to buy these things. And of course, right here, I can't buy with the volume as weak as it is and as brittle as it possibly is. Uh, but again, I can't go short a stock. Um, right now, the only thing I like is that options expiration is tomorrow, which means that the amount of money I risk compared to the amount of money I can make uh, is fairly decent. Other than that, I kind of feel like uh, throwing mo new money in the market right here is probably more like picking up dollar bills in front of a steamroller. All you got to do is trip once and you will become the thinnest trader on Wall Street. Not a chance of that happening to me, is there? Uh, two, two, two. What else do we have? Got a couple of emails here. Let's see what we got. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't paid any attention to Mr. IBM. Just back up to resistance like almost all the other stocks in the market. We'll be back in a minute uh, and wrap up uh, the last segment.
of the show. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And, uh, of course, uh, directly after the show on most of TFNN, the TFN network, is Tom O'Brien. Got another two hours to go after the show. Of course, in uh, about six minutes, uh, but it's not really six minutes because it's politician time, um, which can mean anything from 3 to 3.30, right? Um, they're going to have a press briefing, I guess, for the congressional delegation about Iran. And when they come out, probably going to be at least a handful of news that moves the market around. So, uh I think we still have some action left to go today. Uh, when we uh, we were talking about uh, Slack, uh, work trading for forty dollars and twelve cents got to a high of forty two, low of thirty eight twenty five, and of course uh, today um, it went uh, DPO, which we talked about earlier in the show. Uh, but at the same time, kind of interesting that this thing came out at twenty six bucks again. Too many uh, people fanning the flames of uh, the hype cycle. I'd be very, you know, it, if you haven't made money by the time you went public, there's always kind of an issue. This product's been around for a while. 
and uh, you always have to wonder about it. I have to wait until these things that are a significant discount before I will play them. Uh, but at the same time, remember, uh, if anything turns south, uh, the owners have no, uh, or the original owners have no compulsion or compassion or even law that says that they can't sell every share that they have tomorrow or even later today if they want it. So it's a very, uh, very uh, problematic stock. There's no way to get rid of the ownership in it, much like Facebook. Uh, a lot of these new stocks are doing it, and it's another thing. Or I may love the product, but dislike the stock. Anyway, as always, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.